All right, welcome back everybody for Dungeon Module A3. This is the third in our series so far on the Slave Lords. So parts one and two we've already been through, and here you can see we're on the part three. This is actually an old module you can still purchase uh, these days. We'll look at that on Drive Through RPG at the end. But this is the third in the series against the Slave Lords, and in this third section you can actually see the pictures of the Slave Lords here that the characters have got to find a way to get rid of. We looked at the background through the other two. We won't go through all that again. So there's the front and back of what you see with the game module right there. Just gives you an idea of a few things they're going to run up on. Now where all this is going to really primarily take place is on the island of the Slave Lords. These guys are so rich and so powerful, they actually have their own island, which you can see right here, and actually have their own town, kind of a small city right here called Sutterheim. Now down here below, you can see this is actually how the party's going to enter. We'll look at this area right here called the Salt Slide a little bit further along. But when you look at this island, you can see it's surrounded by water, by one and a half miles right here, all the way around it. It's basically an old volcanic area. This is what's left of the volcano right here, and there's water all around it. So these slave lords have got a great isolated area where they trade and deal in their slaves. But the party in the second module found a way to come in underneath, underground. So they're going to come through this cave area, go through this long area here that's miles long, and actually come up beside this city. So they've got a secret entrance that most people aren't going to know anything about. So there's basically three areas to this dungeon module here. There's the caves, that's this underground area we see right down here at the bottom. Then there's the town, which is here. And then underneath the town, there's a sewer area that the slave lords actually stay in. So I guess they always like to be in the underground areas. Now this is another tournament game, just like the previous two, and the third one that comes after this. So there's rules on the inside to show you exactly how to score it and run it. If you want to run it as a tournament game, just like they did at one of the Gen Cons back in like the early 80s, you can do that too. But here's the first section with the caves right here. So in this area in here, <clears throat> they're going to give you a little table that shows random encounters. We won't look at all of it, but I noticed what was funny, Leprechauns was listed on it. I don't know if Leprechauns have been in this game since uh, first edition rules. It's been a long time, but I thought that was funny that they were on there. Down here at the bottom, you can see some different entrances. So there's a few possible ways coming in. Now, one of them here is just a little blind cave. They have labeled as A, doesn't go anywhere. And then down here at the bottom, you can see some possible entry tunnels, right? They're going to bring them up into room B one way or another. So as they get up into this area, they're going to find two pieces of rough hide. And they would wonder, what in the world is this rough hide here? Why would somebody have left it? Well, over at A1, there's a little floor drop that goes down a salt slide. So somebody who knows this area could actually get these pieces of rough hide and slide on them down this salt slide right here. So eventually they're going to make their way around here to A1. If they get to this little square right here with their sort of little trap, the floor is going to drop and then they're going to slide down a layer of salt. So somebody actually put this salt here to make it where those hides would move down them quite easily. Down this little pathway right here, they tell you there's a luminous fungus all the way down this chute that's actually poisonous. And it's going to act like a slow spell for anybody falling down this trap. So good chance somebody in the party is probably going to catch this, maybe more than one of them here. Once they get down to A2, they're going to find themselves in a guard room. And there's going to be ten gnolls here waiting with crossbows. They're going to hear anybody come sliding down this salt slide, so they're going to be waiting. So just think, gnolls with ten crossbows all ready to shoot just as soon as they appear down here at the bottom. Eventually, they're going to make their way through some of these dead ends and through this tunnel right here leading to A3, which is a piercer cave. Now here there's a false door on one of the walls. If you look directly across right over here on the opposite side, that's a false door. It's just trying to rule to uh, trick people into going all the way across and of course letting the piercers fall from above. So there's that false door and the real exit is behind a boulder, sort of a little hidden. They're not going to see it immediately. They're going to come around to the far side of the room before that happens. But on this ceiling, there's a total of 30 piercers of just the largest size. So these things are big. Two of these piercers are going to fall each round in the room. Fire spells would be the best way to get rid of them. 
the cave is so dark, nobody's really going to be able to see them at all. They're just going to look like they blend in perfectly. So something like a fireball with its large area would be the best way to get rid of them there. So somebody might think of that. Now once they get past this area behind this little boulder right here, they make their way into A4. Here there's a group of gnolls feeding hyenodons, right? Some nasty little pets they got. So five gnolls and three hyenodons are waiting to attack here. Once they get past that, you can see there's always sort of a crazy little set of areas going through here, never really a direct uh, pathway or tunnel in any way. They make their way to A5, a very interesting little room. This is what they call the room that has the curtain of blue fire. Now in this area, you can see stone steps on either side. So those steps descend on each end of the room. At the bottom of it is an area filled with a white bubbling goo. A one foot wide stone bridge arches five feet over it. So they do have this little narrow path to make their way over the goo. Bisecting the room and the bridge, say right about halfway in here, is a crackling blue fire that leaps from wall to wall that looks like lightning. So you can guess it's going to do electric damage. The blue fire will generally hit for around 16 points of electrical damage. If somewhere were to cover themselves in that goo first, they'll take half damage. So somebody might just guess this, who knows? Anyone struck by the lightning while on the bridge will need to make a dexterity check or fall into the goo. Anyone walking through the goo can actually go below the lightning fire, and anyone flying across the room will have any metal magnetized. They really came up with some crazy stuff for this one right here. So somebody might actually end up taking some electrical damage. Maybe they'll end up with their armor, swords, and other things being magnetized as they get to the opposite end of the room. So on from here, they're going to eventually make their self to A6, the hanging rope. Hanging from the center of the room, there'll be a rope. Now there are no visible exits here, but notice how there is a secret door that leads out. The only way to open the secret door is to pull on the rope. Now this will cause the floor to drop and anyone on it will fall 10 feet into a pool of acid. But what a person can do is hang onto the rope and swing to the exit after pulling it. Kind of a clever way. But of course someone might have a fly spell or something such as that. But other than that, they're going to pretty much have to hang on to that rope. Characters with a low strength may have a little bit of uh, difficulty. But eventually they'll figure this out. Pulling the rope, the rope opens the secret door. And they make their way on around to A7. In A7, there's a nasty little creature called a stow roper. This is actually a stone roper weighing about 5,000 pounds. This thing is big. The party will see a man-sized statue of a cigar-shaped beast with six tentacles with a gaping mouth. Tentacles will lash out at anyone entering the room. Missile weapons won't harm the creature, and the first two party members hit by tentacles will fight the party until the stow roper's dead. So he's actually going to take over party members and have them fight for him. Eventually they'll get past this right here. They're going to make their way around to A8, the spike door. This is actually a wooden room inside of a stone one. Kind of odd. A spring-loaded trap with spikes is hidden behind the door, so somebody's liable to get slapped by that right there. Eventually, they make their way to A9, the throne room. Now, this room is locked, so they're going to figure out a way to get in here. Inside, you can see these columns and such. They got the little dots, and the far side right here is what looks like an altar. Now, there's a rust monster in the room which has an illusion on him that makes him look like an ankylosaurus, right? An old type of dinosaur right there. That was what's actually shown on the back cover of the module we looked at earlier. Inside the room is an 8th level illusionist who looks like the Knoll God. So there's a lot of illusion in this room. There are also illusions of ghouls, and the ghouls are actually five real Knoll Guards. So there's actually a rust monster, an 8th level illusionist, and five knoll guards. But again, it looks like an ankylosaurus dinosaur, a knoll god, and ghouls. So at first, the party's probably not going to have any idea what they're up against. The illusionist was hired by the slave lords to guard the entrance to their city. If the illusionist is seriously threatened, he's going to cast a darkness spell and escape through this secret door, which you see to the back. 
A map to the city of Sutterham can be found here, which is the city, the next adventure area, a little bit further along. So interesting little cave map area there. Now here next we have part B to this module, the hidden city of Sutterham. Now as we said before, the city is inside a large hidden volcanic crater. Most of the crater is filled with a lake and in the middle of the lake is the Isle of the Slave Lords. On the island is an extinct volcano peak named, how do you like this, Mount Flaming Blood right there. And then there's the city of Sutterheim. So the secret passages from the caves at area A9 that we saw right back here is going to lead under the lake and comes out on a hill near Sutterheim. So again, if we flip back, here's the passage going under the lake and look up here at the top. They're going to come out here right close to the city. And here's the city map right here. So there's lots of city random encounters. There's assassins, bandits, uh, even Rakshasa, harlots, right? D&D's changed over the years right there, but that is actually included in the random encounters. So looking at the different areas right here, up here at the very top is number one, the main gate. This is a massive iron double door with a portcullis. As soon as the party enters, a beggar is going to run up and approach them. And he's going to whisper that he's an agent for who hired the party and says, Seek out the ivory paladin. So it's a hint as to where they need to go. The city guard has towers at the corners, right? If you look at the number twos, there's lots of guards all throughout this area. There's a slave auction arena, number three, right here in the center, which again is what this place in the Slave Lords is all about. In addition to these, the city is just filled with just tons of taverns, shops of all kinds, inns, guilds, houses of ill repute. Yes, they actually are discussed in the module and much more. But what the little beggar was hinting when he said seek out the ivory paladin was area B14, which you see right over here. <clears throat> and there's an inn here. And outside, there's a little sign on it that says Sign of the White Knight. So that's the ivory paladin they're supposed to look for. Now, if they go to the inside and question who works there, the bartender, and they give him a little gold, he's going to give them clues how to reach the slave lords in the catacomb sewers below. That is the goal of the party in this area right here, is to find out not what's in this city, but to how to get to the secret passageways beneath. And if you look at area 13 right here, notice how there's a secret door. And then at 68 over here, there's another one. There's some clues given by like this uh, bartender and so on that tell people, hey, if you go to these areas here, you can find this little secret passageway that leads below. So there's a lot to this. They tell you there's different ways you can approach this as DM to send them to these areas. Like you never get straightforward advice. Like in one of these areas, there's an individual who has lots of scrolls and they'll tell you to go to this person, you know, that keeps up with those sort of things. And, you know, so sooner or later they're going to figure out they got to hit one of these secret tunnels and they got to get beneath below to the sewer map below the city. So this is part C, the catacombs. So if you look at where they're going to come in, look at here from area 68 or what's that, 13 right down here, eventually they've got no choice but to go to area C1. This is the guardian area, and there's a flesh golem on guard here, guarding the sewer entrance. So that's going to be the first obstacle they're going to have to get past. You can see a little concealed door over here leads over to C2 where there's a pit trap. Now, falling in the pit itself causes no damage, but in the hall above, a jet of flame shoots out from point A towards it in this direction right here. <clears throat> this was set up by the slave lords in case one of them was forced to guide someone down here. The slave lord would lead the way, fall into the pit, and let anybody around him get barbecued by that flame. So actually falling into the pit will save them. And what you see with the darkened areas right here are the tournament areas, but again, we're going to go over all of it. They get over to C3. This is the Mimic's Lair. This Mimic likes to appear as a wooden chest in the room, and anybody getting within 10 feet is going to get attacked. Over here at C4, there's a couple of Hellhounds. Notice how there's two secret doors. Well, there's a Hellhound behind each one. Over here at C5, they're going to first encounter a Minotaur. You can see what it looks like, sort of a little maze right here of all sorts of little uh, doors and things such as that. <clears throat> well, this Minotaur 
is here to guard this area for the slave lords too. The Minotaur is going to fire crossbow bolts at points A and B. So anytime they reach some of these points A, B, wherever it may be, depending on the route they take, the Minotaur is going to fire the crossbow and fall back. And this crossbow, he fires this big. It's like four foot long bolts. These things do it something like three to 18 points of damage. Eventually, the party will make their way to area C, the Minotaur's lair. <clears throat> the Minotaur will fire crossbow bolts at points A and B. Again, depending on how the party comes in, he retreats to C, and he's going to fight here. At area D, they'll find his hoard. It's got a nice little hoard of uh, items there, a nice little treasure. At E, there's lots of crossbow traps. At F, there's a secret door. It's actually a one-way door that's trapped. Somebody here could take a lot of electric damage. At C6, they're gelatinous cubes. So if you look right up here at the C6, that dotted area is a pit trap. Classic D&D right there, a pit trap with a gelatinous cube in it. Over here to Area 7, there's what's called the Grotto of Terror. Now, this is actually a very large natural cavern. Seems like any time somebody digs below ground, they always run into natural caverns. In this area, <clears throat> there's luminescent fungi, seven feet tall, and the caps of these mushrooms are actually four feet wide. They're wide enough that somebody could actually use them as boats and go across the water in this area. Now, in the water, there are dozens of leeches that will attack anyone that comes into that area. The mushroom caps, again, can be used as boats, right? So people actually get in them and paddle themselves across with whatever they can find. Over at Area B, uh, where did they have Area B labeled on here? Looks like it may have got missed or maybe I don't see it. But anyway, at Area B, there's a shambling mound, right? Somewhere along in here. Place him in this area right over here. Either way, <clears throat> the shambling mound is going to exit the water and attack. So as they come into this area right here, he's going to come out of the water. They better get in the water fast and paddle past him or they're going to have to battle with him. So let's see, C8 right up here. There's two giant constrictor snakes just waiting to attack. And then over here we have C9. Here's the council chamber of the slave lords. And five slave lords will be present and waiting. They've actually been using a crystal ball to observe the party. So they can't be surprised. They're going to be waiting for them as soon as they come into this area. Now when you look at the slave lords, they're actually located on all the odd numbers, right? These are supposed to be chairs 1 through 9. Well, 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9 <clears throat> have got a slave lord at them. At chair one, there's a wizard ninth level. Chair three, eleventh level assassin. Five, tenth level fighter. Seven, ninth level monk. And chair nine has an eleventh level cleric. Now remember, this is an adventure for characters level five to seven, so they're seriously outmatched right here. Now they give you different strategies in the book for how each one of these individuals is going to react. But the cleric has got to survive this. The cleric's going to stay to the background. So cleric's going to stay to the back, heal, cast spells, whatever the cleric wants to do, let the others really do the battle. And again, the party is actually supposed to lose this. And you say, why would that be? Because the next module is actually counting on that. It actually counts on the party getting captured, and then they start in the dungeons of the slave lords. So don't let your party get disappointed when they get outmatched and get beaten right here because it's almost certainly going to happen. doesn't have to. But once the party comes into this area, there's going to be a stone wall that drops in the hallway blocking any retreat. So once the party comes into this area, <clears throat> they're going to fight whether they like it or not right here. Now if they win, that's pretty amazing. They can loot the bodies right here and take this spiral staircase up into area B59 in the city above. Here, there's just tons of guards, and they're going to be captured or killed up above if they weren't right here. So one way or another, the party's going to be captured. Now, if the party loses, the cleric will return. The cleric's going to cast Raise Dead on any party members who were killed in the battle so that they can be interrogated. So again, death or not, that's fine. The slave lord cleric's going to raise them back up. Either way, no matter whether they defeat the slave lords and then go above or they lose to the slave lords down below, they're going to be captured, resurrected, raised dead, whatever if needed, and then they're going to enter module C4 in the dungeons of the slave lords. So pretty interesting little encounter right here. You don't see many where they plan on the party 
being killed or captured, but this one does. And the next one's a very interesting adventure itself. So if you want to purchase this right here, of course you can go to Drive Through RPG and get this for $4.99. Still, these things are converted to 5e rules and a lot of fun, fun to play. So I hope you enjoyed Assault on the Area of the Slave Lords. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.